There are all kinds of cars, and they come in all types of shapes and sizes. This really should go without saying, but we all have different preferences, so nothing is completely purposeless or useless. I say this because I got this video idea because I overheard some of my RA cokers say stuff like, no one needs a van, or no one needs a truck. Sure, you may not need a truck or a van, but there are plenty of reasons other people may. Also, shout out to 802 Garage for being an RA who is competent with cars. Make sure to check out his channel if you like car projects because I believe he's currently working with three cars right now. I'll link to his channel in the description and at the end of this video. With that said, let's start this video by explaining the three main criteria I'll be ranking cars based on, being performance, utility, and comfort. I am well aware that there are extreme minivans with 600 horsepower, but I will be referring to generic run-of-the-mill models in this video. This generalization is done with the intent of keeping this guide simple for beginners. The first type of car we'll cover are vans, more specifically minivans. Vans are generally meant to be a low-cost, family-friendly vehicle designed for transportation. Popular models include Honda Odyssey, Toyota Sienna, Chrysler Pacifica, Nissan Quest, and Dodge Caravan. Vans don't tend to rank very high in performance. In regards to power, many of them feature smaller engines, mostly being V6 or 4-cylinder engines. The most common drivetrain in vans is front-wheel drive. This means that vans aren't exactly that fast or powerful. This lack of power limits a van's usability in extreme weather conditions, especially in the winter when snow and ice covers the road. Going up slopes covered in thick snow and ice can become a difficult or even impossible task, and going off-road to explore and adventure isn't exactly optimal for a van. Towing can be somewhat limited, but it is not entirely impossible. Vans do feature a large amount of storage space, especially if you need to carry something large. You can always put the back seats down. A van's overall utility is still quite high. Moving on to comfort, a van is astounding in this category, and this is where it shines. Most vans are capable of comfortably seating 7 to 9 people. Additional features such as onboard mini TV screens, several cup holders, and amazing visibility make a van a very comfortable car to drive and entertaining for passengers to relax and ride in. Leg room is never in shortage, and using your back window or really any window should never be a difficult task as they are very large. The suspension in most vans provides a very nice and balanced ride feel, not being too stiff or too soft, so most roads shouldn't take your passengers or you by surprise. Vans also make for a quiet ride as they feature a lot of insulation to make conversations easy to hear and also for heat and air condition to be more effective more quickly. The final verdict is that vans are an amazing addition for a family looking for a comfortable vehicle primarily to transport people. It can do its fair share of utility in regards to carrying a lot of luggage and it can be used for lightweight towing tasks, but nothing extreme. Performance is lackluster, but that is more than made up for by the car's strength and comfort. A powerful engine with louder exhaust would actually do a van injustice as it would contradict the quiet and fuel efficient trips that a van is so well renowned for. There are many types of trucks, but in this video I'll predominantly focus on pickup trucks and full size pickup trucks. Popular models include Ford F-150, Ram 1500, Nissan Titan, Toyota Tacoma, and Chevrolet Silverado. Trucks tend to feature powerful performance as they boast large displacement engines that have a lot of cylinders. Most trucks have V6s, V8s, or even V10s. These engines aren't just for show as the power they pack is paramount for the tasks that most trucks are expected to carry out. Most trucks tend to be all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive as it allows them to make better use of their power. The suspension on most trucks do allow them to conquer many types of terrain, making them quite formidable in off-roading. They ride high up, which allows them to even wade through small creeks or shallow rivers. Trucks are king when it comes to utility. Trucks can easily fit all kinds of large objects as their cargo bed is not limited by a roof. This allows them to transport heavy-duty construction equipment as well as large, fun, recreational equipment such as dirt bikes. Trucks are great at towing really anything, from something small and simple like a jet ski or something larger than the truck itself like a boat, the powerful performance in the truck helps it achieve tasks otherwise impossible to perform in other vehicles. When it comes to comfort, a truck is still a decent choice. Depending on the truck, they are able to seat anywhere from 2 to 5 people. You could of course have people sit in the cargo bed as well, but that isn't exactly the most comfortable experience. The suspension on most trucks actually are quite soft because it is designed with the intent of going off-road. So while you're on the road, it actually makes for a really comfortable ride. 
Trucks also have great visibility as they have large windows and ride higher up than most vehicles do, which gives the driver's field of view more access to their surroundings. Final verdict is that trucks have a robust performance, amazing utility, and decent comfort. A truck is best purchased with the intent of using its utility and to some extent its ability to transport people. If you are in need of a vehicle that needs to be able to function well in most weather, conquer most terrain, transport large items, and tow all sorts of things, a truck definitely should be your choice. SUV or sport utility vehicle is a vehicle that many non-car people oftentimes confuse with hatchbacks or vans. If you know someone who has trouble seeing the differences between SUVs, hatchbacks, and vans, make sure to share this video with them. Popular SUVs include Acura MDX, Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Ford Explorer, and Mazda CX-9. SUVs are a very well-rounded vehicle and feature above average performance. Many SUVs feature 4-cylinder or V6 engines, however, some companies will also turbocharge these engines which gives the SUV some life and character, but at the cost of fuel efficiency. When it comes to their drivetrain, they are also very well-rounded, covering all the bases. Most SUVs tend to be all-wheel drive, which allows them to drive well in most weather conditions as they can maintain grip on wet roads and power through snow. They also ride high and feature suspension capable of medium off-roading situations and surpassing most terrain. When it comes to utility, they don't quite have the length a van does or the towing prowess of a truck. Instead, an SUV is a perfect balance, a great in-between choice. When it comes to comfort, an SUV will seat 5-7 to seven people comfortably. SUVs ride decently high, so they feature great all-around visibility. However, because they ride high and have softer suspension, they tend to have body roll when going too fast through corners. Many people argue SUVs are useless as a van or truck outshines it in utility, but they fail to realize that not everyone can buy multiple cars. If you can only buy one car but want a car that is capable of above average performance, above average storage space, and the ability to tow most objects, and the ability to still sit people in an uncomfortable environment, then an SUV is a great choice. Hatchbacks are also great well-rounded vehicles and oftentimes come at a much lower price. Some of them can have a strong focus on performance. Yep, that's right. I know to most non-car people watching this video, you probably think hatchbacks were just really girly looking lame cars, but they're actually heavily respected in the automotive community for their performance. Popular hatchbacks include the Ford Focus, Volkswagen Golf, Peugeot 208, and Hyundai Veloster. Most hatchbacks feature four-cylinder turbocharged engines, which is not something to underestimate. Despite being a smaller engine, the reliance on forced induction allows some models to make upwards of 300 horsepower, while still being lightweight and nimble. When it comes to drivetrain, hatchbacks are all over the place, being all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, or front-wheel drive. The same applies to suspension as some feature stiff, uncomfortable suspension designed only to be driven on smooth roads, such as racetracks while others will have soft suspension capable of extreme off-roading situations that can turn them into insane rally beasts. In regards to utility, a hatchback is a great car to carry and transport a good deal of items, and are surprisingly talented at towing. Most hatchbacks can comfortably seat up to 5 people. The visibility in most hatchbacks is amazing, but you are riding lower, which isn't exactly a bad thing. It gives the hatchback a more stanced and sporty feel to it, and this shows during corners, as hatchbacks tend to have less body roll when quartering. Sure, they can't carry as much as a van, or tow as much as a truck, or ride as high as an SUV, but they're an amazing, affordable alternative to someone looking for a fast car that can do a little bit of everything. I put this entry far later into the video because many people are familiar with what a sedan is, but stay tuned as you may still learn something new. I'll focus primarily on mid-size sedans and full-size sedans. Honestly, I can make a whole video about sports sedans and performance saloons, but we're not here to make things that complicated. Popular models include Honda Accord, Toyota Camry, Ford Taurus, Crown Victoria, and Chevrolet Impala. Most mid-size sedans feature a front-wheel drive drivetrain and a four-cylinder engine. Most full-size sedans feature a turbocharged four-cylinder or V6 engine and are either front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. The average sedan isn't a crazy performance machine, but they aren't exactly a slouch either. Sedans are fairly light and ride at a medium height. This makes them capable of light off-roading such as driving on grass, gravel paths, or shallow mud. This lightweight combined with low displacement engines makes sedans pretty fuel efficient. 
A sedan's utility is mediocre as its trunk is average size and even though some of them can put down their back seats, it just doesn't quite compare to the other entries on this list. In regards to towing, they are mostly limited to pulling medium sized objects and, though not impossible, they can pull objects larger than them, but it is not recommended as they will struggle a bit. When it comes to comfort, a sedan is an average choice as they can seat 4-5 to five people comfortably and provide standard visibility. A sedan is normally the primary choice for new families looking for a car that is cheap to maintain while still being able to accomplish daily tasks like shopping for groceries or even doing some light towing. It makes for a great commute to work as its fuel efficiency makes it a good choice to drive alone or don't intend to carry a large amount of passengers. Here is the most exciting entry on this list, and of course I saved it for last, since most non-car people do not dare even consider to buy a coupe, or coupe. I've been told by some comments that I pronounce it wrong, but I'm an American and the majority of us say coupe. So that's what I'm going to call it for the remainder of this video because our version doesn't have an accent over the E. Seriously, enjoy a video for its content and not for its different pronunciation due to culture. Popular coupes include Ford Mustang, Dodge Challenger, Chevrolet Camaro, Hyundai Genesis, and Toyota 86. Or is it 86? Oh god, what have I done? I start another pronunciation more in the comments. Most coupes excel in performance as they generally feature 4-cylinder V6 or V8 engines. Most traditional sports cars or coupes will feature a rear-wheel drive drivetrain. They are very lightweight compared to the other entries on this list, which allows them to corner and accelerate significantly better. However, the rear-wheel drivetrain makes them somewhat challenging to drive in certain weather conditions such as rain and outright not safe to drive in extreme weather conditions such as heavy snow or ice. They are also not recommended at all for off-roading, as even a simple drive on a gravel road can be a very uncomfortable experience due to their stiff suspension which is designed for conquering roads and tracks. This emphasis on performance results in the lack of utility as they have fairly small storage compartments that are mostly used for simple grocery shopping. Despite their power, most coupes aren't the greatest choice for towing anything heavy as it can result in an unhealthy transmission. In regards to comfort, they only seat two people comfortably and oftentimes have back seats that don't quite fit a full grown adult. Since they only have two doors, even getting into those back seats can be a challenge or a simple nuisance when you have more than one passenger. As mentioned previously, their suspension makes them ride rather stiff and certain coupes can feel every bump in the road. Feeling the road isn't a bad thing, in fact most car enthusiasts enjoy it as it is a direct communication between us, the car, and its environment. However, for someone looking for a commuter or family car for road trips, you might want to look elsewhere. Coupes are normally sports cars and have an emphasis on performance, which comes at the cost of utility and comfort. This doesn't make them useless as they can provide a very fun and unique experience. I hope this video was informative, especially for those who are looking for help in choosing what type of car they want. So what will it be? Comment down below what your favorite type of car style is and why you enjoy it. Make sure to like this video and share it with friends, especially the ones who are struggling in making a decision about what to buy. If you like automotive and gaming, then subscribe to my channel for regular uploads. There most likely will be a part 2 for this series, so stay tuned for more beginner's guide to buying a car. Thanks for watching. Blade Angel out.